it's not enough to just be here, you guys. We've got to say, how can I make the most of the time that I have? Jump, you're ready now. Jump, the sky's the limit. Jump, jump, jump. Leave it all behind and jump. Just go for it. Jump, if you can dream it. Jump, jump, jump. Together we can do all things. Hey guys, this is Rebecca here with Jump, and today I have Kelly Abanda. She is from California, is that right? That's right, That's Los right. Angeles. Yes, <laughs> crazy city, that's so crazy. Anyway, Kelly is the founder of Design Your Detour, and she has some beautiful things to share with us today. So welcome, Kelly. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited for this conversation. <laughs> Great. Um, I met you in California and we went for the first time for we went in a tea house we went and you were dressed in beautiful stripes and I was fascinated by you at that moment because I adore people that dress in stripes and uh <laughs> and we are all sharing we, I felt like okay I think I, I feel very connected to this woman and I wanted to know more about you and I wanted to know what it, what are you about and when you started sharing about your trips and the way you live your life I really believe there's so much that you can add not so not only into my own life but in the life of the listeners that are listening to this podcast about jumping to the life of their dreams and I was like Kelly is just a perfect example of how you did that jump in your own life and story. So tell us a little bit about you. Well, first, I just want to say thanks again, because I would echo everything you said. And in that meeting, I thought the same about you. And I was like, I really hope our paths stay connected. So I'm sure your listeners have already seen like how amazing you are and just the life that you bring to the world. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, so my story briefly is that I was like many, many people living a life of secure and secure safety. So I was working a job that paid me really well, that I was moving up the corporate ladder. I was in a senior leadership position. And so externally things were really good. You know, I had a good social circle. I had a good job. I was making good money. But inside there was a part of me that was just like screaming out saying, is this really what life is all about? You know, I wasn't, wasn't excited to get up and go to work. I, I knew that I wasn't doing bad things in the world, but I also didn't feel like I was doing my best things in the world. And so, you know, I just came to this place of saying, is this really the life that I want to live? And if not, I'm the only one who can make a difference. I'm the one who has to make a different choice. And so it took a little while but I finally took this leap that I'd wanted to take for a long time, left that job to travel the world. And I was supposed to be gone for three months and all these incredibly magical things happened. I had soul transformations I didn't even know I needed. Wow. And those three months turned into two years plus. I'm actually still doing a lot of traveling and I'm coming up on three years now. So um, I, I just... I want to, now that I've had that experience, I just want to help so many people unlock those dreams that are on the inside of them because most of us just let them die. And that's not the way we have to live. And so um, I, I'm here today to talk about that and to talk with you. And I just hope there's something in my story that will help somebody go, you know what, if she can do it, I can do it because I don't have any superpowers. I'm right. just a normal person. Absolutely. Right. But Kelly, there's so much excuse when it comes to traveling because people are like, I can't afford, I can't leave my job. I don't have days off. I have kids, so I don't have anybody to watch my kids or this or that or this. There's so many excuses about traveling. And how do you overcome those excuses? How can you get through it? Yeah, that's such a great question. So the first thing I want to say is it's the same for anything in life. We will find excuses for things that 
we think we want, but we're not willing to make either the sacrifice for or take risks for or get over fears about. And traveling is one, number one, I think people think you have to have like millions of dollars to have a nice vacation. And it's so not true. There's a thousand resources these days where you can find great deals and you can travel with your family. Even I met people who were doing something similar to me, but with a family. Um, So they were homeschooling their kids while they were traveling. And so the thing is that we sometimes look at other people doing it and we disqualify us from having the same experience because we say, oh, well, I don't have X, Y, or Z that that person has. But the reality is if you knew their whole story, there's probably not much difference between you and them. And so whatever it is, if it's traveling, if it's changing your career, if it's um, bringing in a new relationship or getting rid of bad relationships, whatever it is that you know you want to shift, getting at the excuses and pulling them out is such a key. Realize that you are worth that life you want to live, that you have what it takes to make it happen. You can do it. You can do it. Oh my gosh, can I just jump now? Because I want to be like, me, me, me. You know, you're right about that. The first step, don't you think, is to tell yourself to say, Rebecca or Kelly or, you know, Julie, or uh, you are worth it to to live the the life that you always dream. It's okay to be a pursuer of those things. Yes. Well, and you know why I know that you deal with it all the time. Like, why do we disqualify ourselves? It's so easy for us to believe the negative and so hard for us to believe the positive. And if you look around at somebody in your life who's doing something that you admire, something you wish you could do, why do you really think you are so different? Because you're not. You know, actually, we're none of us have. Same. Yes. We are all the same. You are me and I am you and we are all humans. Yes. And that's the thing that sometimes you have to remind yourselves because sometimes we have people that we admire, like Kathy Heller. We're big fans. And yeah. then we forget that she is a human just like me and you with emotions that needs to be encouraged and needs to have friends and needs to be celebrated the same way that me and you do. But there's so much disqualification in our own minds that is such a a big lie, right? Yes. So how do you address, like, how do you address fear? Yeah. So when I'm working, so now I have a coaching business that I help people get through this. And when we talk about fear, because really fear and limiting beliefs, the things that the messages we keep telling ourselves They are the thing that is our biggest barrier. And so where we start is to, I kind of outline some of the major fears that people have, fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of being abandoned, like all these kind of major things that people fear. And we try to dig into it and figure out where did that, where's the root of that fear coming from? Because somewhere, here's the thing about fear. It probably showed up in your life as a protective force. It was doing something good when it came. It just overstayed its welcome. And instead of being like, hey, I invited you into my living room for coffee. Now it's like living in the bedroom. It's taking over the garage. It's everywhere in your house instead of just coming for that short moment. And so we try to get to the root of it and say, listen, thank you for for coming but we don't need you anymore. We are in a different situation. We're more capable. We can do whatever. Starting to shift the mindset. Our mind is so powerful and we don't, that's the superpower we all have that we don't use. Mm -hmm. It's our mindset. So good. When you talk about that. And the thing is, you're saying that you're doing some coaching, correct? That's right. So who do you coach right now? Like what type of people? Is that creators or business people? Who who are who is the people that you help? Yeah, so it's funny. I set out to say, look, I'm, I want to help the people who were me three years ago. The people who are oh, mid-career. Right? Yes. The people who are mid-career and have the things that they thought they were trying to accomplish in life, but really are feeling unsatisfied. And, you know, we kind of get to this midlife place and go, I don't know, is this really what life is all about? And do I want to shift and right. empowering them? Um, I have actually had people who aren't in that category come along the way and say, look, I need help too. But my main focus is like mid-career women who are just saying, 
look, there's got to be more. And I, I, I know it in my head, but I can't get myself to act. I need some help. Mm, that's so good because as we are coming to the journey of me being a creative artist and business, and I have realized especially the, this last past year, how important it is to have the coaching over you, to have somebody that can be like, hey, check this. There's so many more options for you in here that you can do that you didn't even see. Let me show you or, or even asking questions that makes people think about like, oh, I never thought it that way, you know? But the coaching process of many, many years ago was something that was an illusion for only the wealthy. Remember that? Yes. Like yeah. only the very important and wealthy people could get coaching. That has shifted and changed it. To now people are starting to wake up to say, I need to have coaching. Yeah. And yeah. It's, and it, because of technology too, it makes it easier. You know, there are, you can connect with coaches around the world and I completely understand what you're saying because I was there too. Even when I knew I wanted to be a coach, I had this hesitation in my own self of like, should I actually invest in my own coach? Like if I'm supposed to be a coach, shouldn't I be able to coach myself? And the, the truth is that there is just something when you have an outside person helping to reflect back to you, like you said, asking questions, like my coaching philosophy is that I really truly believe that we all have the answers inside of us. We, we just need some help, some space, some good questions, some challenges to help us bring it up and have the courage to move forward and take action. So that's really what coaching is about. And you're so right that it's not, it isn't just for the elite and the wealthy anymore. There are so many ways to connect and it's invaluable. So think about if you were going to invest in, I was just was talking with somebody who was considering, you know, should I get this certification? And the certification was really about um, like giving them some kind of like safety net the credential, that credential is not what they needed. What they needed was somebody to help them get over fear. So we we will easily think about investing in education, quote unquote, but we hesitate when it's about like development. But I'm here to tell you that if your mindset is not right, it's really hard to get where you want to go. And changing your mindset. I know that your listeners are people who are strong, competent, and capable people. And the thing is, because they're already those things, if it was possible to just do it on your own, they would have already done it, right? Yes. We need help. We just need help. Even our strong, independent, capable people, we need help. And there's so many gifts, Kelly. There's so many incredible gifts that just really needs to be released yes. and unlocked. You know, and that's, I think, why we do what we do is I think that's why you do what you do is to help people be like, hey, guys, let's all get the key and unlock our dreams. Can we please? Yes, please. <laughs> the world needs you. What are you sitting on right now that the world needs? Oh, so, that's so amazing. You know, I just shared, um, I, I was just telling Rebecca about this too, but I just shared that. You know, one of my friends, unexpectedly, her husband died in a car crash and they have two kids. So she, in an instant now, her life is completely different. And we, none of us know, we can't predict when something is going to shift our entire life. And so what I say is like, you know, what, what are you, you've been waiting to do someday? What if that someday never comes? You know, you have today. You don't know that you have someday. So why wait? Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. We need your gifts. We need who you are. I'm so glad you're doing what you're doing and that you have this podcast and you are encouraging people to say, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. And, and the craziest thing, Kelly, is when I started podcast, I thought to myself, who will ever listen to a girl that has accent and she does not even speak correctly? Who will listen to this girl? And to realize that doesn't matter if there's one person like Luann Baker, the one that always listens to the podcast that I started for her. If Luann Baker listens, then I'm making this for Luann Baker. So be it. But the thing is, more people jump in and more people are listening now and realize this is being a blessing to me. You know what I mean? Now, 
I want to shift this conversation a little bit because I'm a big believer of getting different cultures and different ways of understanding things is because I'm from Brazil. I came with that baggage of how we Brazilians do things. After moving in America, we do things different. It's very American ways. <laughs> you know, in Brazil, we go to the movie theater. This is the funny story. We buy one soda, one big soda. Yeah, and then we pass it on to all our friends. If you were with 10 people, like, you drink a little bit, pass it on. Pass it on. The first time that I did this in America, my husband was like, what are you doing? This is the most gross, disgusting thing. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a culture shock right there. Culture shock. You know, we do things different. Mm -hmm. With you traveling and and you can share with us the places that you have been, what did you see in culture-wise the difference in people and how they do things? What will, will be one thing that really, it's like resound in your heart and it kind of changed you? Yeah, such a great question. So I ended up in uh, now about 27 different countries in the end, um, and I'm going to a few more now. But I, I think that, that they're, they're intertwined. It's two things, but they're intertwined. One is community. Um, in so many cultures outside the U.S., people are driven by the connection they have to the people around them. Their, their immediate family and then people who would be called family. Like, for example, I spent a bunch of time in Fiji, six months in total, four months of that living on a remote island in a little village, tiny village, like, you know, no cars, limited electricity, outdoor plumbing, like all that. And pe people would, we would see people and they'd be like, who's that? Oh, that's my cousin. Who's that? Oh, that's my cousin. They don't mean cousin, like blood cousin. They mean cousin, like that's my family. We got each other's back. We're doing things together and they're living communally. Like they're not just thinking about what's good for them. They're thinking about what's good for everybody. Even if that means they have to sacrifice personally. Mm -hmm. And that really stuck with me because I saw that in many places that I visited and it's very like anti how we do things in the U S you know, here we're very much about being solitary and independent and taking care of yourself. And, you know, having some isolation from people is really kind of a value we have. And I think it's so unfortunate because I, I believe that we've been designed to connect to other people. So community is one of those things. And then the other thing that's connected is this idea of having a balance in life. So in the U.S., we're so driven by working hard. You know, we work really hard and up to the developed countries, we really have the least amount of vacation time. And I, you know, I talk to people from other countries that'll be like, are you serious? People have sometimes only two weeks of vacation. That's silly. We start with four and then move up from there or start with six and move up from there. And what happens is that we're so driven by this work culture that we don't know how to really replenish ourselves. So Like I think about the way that we tend to vacation here. We work so hard for 50 weeks out of the year. Like we run ourselves ragged and we're looking forward to these two weeks of vacation or maybe one week because we've had to use one week for family things. Right. We have one week left of vacation and we're just putting all our hopes in that one week to change everything. Mm -hmm. But the reality is you can't like live your whole life with stress and whatever, get away for one week and have everything shift unless you're super, super, super intentional with that one week. Because while you're away, you might feel like you're getting some refreshment, but you're going to come back to the same coworkers, the same office, the same annoying people, the same politics. That's all going to be happening. And unless you've totally shifted, you're going to fall right back into those same patterns. So we can't keep doing it like that. Like Many other countries have gotten a better balance of, yes, it's important to work hard and be a good employee and do like give your best when you're at the office, but when you're finished, you're finished and you go home and you have family time and that's it. You know, this is the time where you're speaking straight to my heart. Mm. Because it's like for people like me that I own three different business, it is hard to stop. It's hard, you know? And then I have been like more and more like schedule time to really like, okay, we're going to stop this time. We're going to do and try to be intentional about resting. But then, you know, when you go and you talk like, hey, I really want to rest, 
there's always that voice, the fear that says, you don't have the money for that. What are you thinking about doing? Hey, you should not do that. You have 10,000 projects to finish. What if you don't finish? Then you don't. And then it's going to become a nightmare in your life. And then it goes on and on. And then you literally is to talk to that fear and be like, you know, fear, I need a rest. Yeah. What does your fear say? When, when, you, when you have to say to your fear, listen, fear, ain't nobody got time for you. I need a rest. And nobody got <laughs> time for you. <laughs> That's what, like, what does your fear try to say back to you? Right. It tries to tell you like, no, you're not right. Like you, resting is for the weak. Resting is for the lazy, but we weren't designed to go hard all the time. And the reality, I don't know how you found it. I know for me that if I really take time to rest, here's another thing I had to identify. What are the things that actually really replenish me? Because even though it feels nice to veg out and just Netflix binge watch something that doesn't actually replenish me. You know, in fact, when I'm honest about it, I feel a little bit more drained after that. Right. So I have to know the things that really replenish me and spend my quote unquote rest time doing those things or relaxing in the way that actually replenishes me so that when I come back, I have a clear head, more energy, more focus. And so those two things have to happen. You've got to identify what it is and then also be willing to do it. Take, take that time because you, like you are a great example, Rebecca, that you are doing 10,000 different things and you're successful at them and amazing magical things happen because you put your hand to the plow and you say, I'm going to do this, but we need you here for the long haul. And that means you got to take care of yourself. You got to rest. This is so good. I mean, this is so good. Kelly, tell us one thing. How can people find you and connect with you? Are you planning to... Do you have a blog? Are you planning to write books about your trips? How can people get to know Kelly more? Yeah, well, I totally welcome it. I love connecting with people. People are my favorite thing in the world. Um, So you can find me on social media. Um, I have my business name is Design Your Detour. So you can find me at Design Your Detour, both on Instagram and Facebook. You can also follow me personally, um, Kelly Abanda, A-B-A-N-D-A. Um, at on Facebook and then my um, personal Instagram is beautifully lost and found and I am writing a book so when that's up and out I will definitely let you know so that you can tell your viewers if they're interested I'm going to be writing about some of the travels I had the things that I learned and then in there some lessons that I want people to take with so I don't ever want to just be like talk 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 I want to be like I'll share my experience because I wanted to encourage you to step up and have your own experience right. because the world, there's plenty of magic in the world for all of us. Yes. So we gotta, have, yes. And then we'll do this when we, the book is about to be released, we'll bring you back. Yes. So you can share all the channels that you, the book will be. And that's very exciting. Yeah. And uh, one thing about um, before we go, I always ask our guests and the people that we bring to the gym podcast is, do you have right now a quote that really speaks to you that you want to share with the listeners? Like, this is my quote for this month or this year. This is my word, and I would love to share with you. What is it? Yeah, I'd love to share it with you. So first of all, anything Nelson Mandela has said, I love. That man was such an inspiration. And I'll have in my book a story about getting to visit his private home. Anyway, it was amazing. I couldn't one of the magical Nelson things that Mandela happened is like being with Nelson Mandela's house or yeah. something. Oh yeah. That's another, yeah. <laughs> we get there. So, yes. So here is one quote that I really, really love. So he said, what counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived. It is what difference we've made in the lives of others that will determine the significance of the life we lead. It's not enough to just be here. You guys, we've got to say, how can I make the most of the time that I have? And, you know, Nelson Mandela is such an example of saying like, look, I took, I mean, you talk about somebody who had bad circumstances in life. I mean, you can't even compare. And this man turned that around and said, look, I believe that there's still good in people. And I believe in the possibilities of the future and has impacted the world 
for all of history as a result. And so if he can do it, I can do it. You can do it. Everyone listening, you can do it. What do you want your life to really be about? Kelly, you're so inspired and you're beautiful. And uh, I love having you here. And definitely I feel like we are so sisters and we are going to collaborate and do more things together. And uh, I, I'm just very grateful you came to jump and thank you. Yeah, it's been so great. And I look forward to staying connected. And one other thing that other people, way people can connect. So follow me on social media because I'm going to be doing a 10 city tour in the U.S., um, leading this workshop called From Dreaming to Doing. And um, in there, we're going to just help you get some really practical tips and tools. And so I'm setting that schedule up now and it should be posted in the next couple of weeks. And so uh, if I'm coming to your city, I would love for you to come and be a part of that. So absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Love you. I <laughs> love you too. Drop, you're ready now. Drop, the sky's the limit. Drop, drop, drop. Leave it all behind and jump. Just go for it. Jump. Jump.